Stephen Cook here. Welcome to our second of our winter Hebrew review. Today we're going to talk about the gutturals and the race. There's Aleph, He, Chet, Ayin, and then Reish also often acts like one of these guttural letters. As an example of these letters, let's take the very first lesson sentence. The very look at this Aleph in bearer sheet. It actually quiesces. There's no vowel under it. So it's essentially a silent letter as if it's not there. Let's look at the next Aleph at the end of Bara. It quiesces at the end of the verb, and therefore, because it creates an open syllable, the vowel before it, under the resh, lengthens. The aleph in ha'aretz, that aleph rejects the doubling dages of the definite article, and therefore the definite article compensates, if you will, for that an inability of the dagesh to go in the aleph and the vowel under the he lengthens. Okay, let's look at the final assignment of our exercise, section H. We're gonna put a box around any words that we find that do not have one of these four gutturals or the letter race. And indeed, as you look through, you see how common words with guttural letters are. There's really only two instances of words that do not have a guttural letter or a race. Well, enough of this complicated phonetics for now. Since Genesis 1-3 is our final lesson sentence, when God says, let there be light, let's pause for a bit to do some Reflection on some artwork about Genesis 1-3. This is one of Odilon Redden's late 19th century noirs, charcoal drawings that he made over several decades, so named for their dark tones and mysterious supernatural imagery. Warm-toned paper is covered with strong black strokes of charcoal, creating a primordial atmosphere of chaos. Tohu vabohu, a dark void from which a capped head of a bearded figure appears. At this point, we are at the emergence of light of Genesis 1, verse 3, as a strong supernatural light emanates from the figure even though his eyes are cast in mysterious shadow. And he is smiling slightly. Above and to the right of the figure's head, there is something like a thought bubble, the divine cerebral movement that directs creation. But light is streaming down from it. The divine imagination bursts into material reality as God reveals God's self once again as a master of new creations.